Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 7, Episode 13. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for the episode. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this was an interesting episode. This was Cecile's episode after all and we are still not into the back half of the season. This is like a kind of midway point. We had Cisco's episode, now we have Cecile's, and next week is Allegra's episode, and then after that, we're starting the Godspeed stuff, which we won't have very long with, so I'm finding it a bit strange why they have these few episodes. So this was like a decent episode. There was stuff that was good, there was stuff that wasn't so good. We're gonna break it all down in this video. Also, next week's episode is Allegra's episode, and uh, I'm not super hyped for that. I'm just going to say that, so maybe next week you may see like a little bit of a rant, because I just got a feeling I know what this episode is going to be like, because, you know, we are seeing Allegra's cousin come back, and yeah, she wasn't very good. Anyway, let's go back and uh, dig into this episode. So at the start of the episode, Joe is digging into Kramer, he finds some evidence on her, serving at an army base and he goes to investigate it and that is revealed towards the end of the episode and if we skip right to the end joe and cecile talk about mental health which is obviously very good and i think that is like the best aspect that they tackle mental health in the episode was like right at the end with joe actually talking i thought he obviously is very convincing as always and i thought it was like kind of impactful and so Joe reveals at this point that Kramer's last army mission was ambushed and that she was the only one on her team who all got killed who actually survived. So it seems like maybe she betrayed her team. And so at this point I was kind of waiting for them to reveal that like she was a part of the suicide squad or something because the way that Joe was teasing it I was like hmm this sounds like the suicide squad but well it seems like it's just like a normal army sort of team and she potentially betrayed them i'm not sure if i 100 buy into that like i think kramer is bad but i don't know if she would like betray like an entire like cohort of her friends and the people that are working for her i'm not so sure about that but we'll have to wait and see so that's an interesting twist at the end of the episode but chester at the start has built a new lab with cisco used to be based and it's a fantastic lab, it looks really cool, it's got like a bunch of new things and it's got like some cool machines and then you have Chester dancing, he's got the music playing in the background, the system breaks and Caitlin is also there and she kind of does like a little dance as well. I actually love Chester's obsession with music and just dancing like whenever he feels like it. I think it's very cool and I think it's very quirky and it's unlike any of the other characters and it does obviously remind of Cisco, but like to another level and so it's great but anyway so he goes down to the star archives as his sound system breaks and down there he finds barry and iris looking all disheveled and it seems like according to barry they're trying in star labs i don't know what was going on there but yeah that's a thing and it's funny and I don't know, in Star Labs? Like, come on, guys. That is freaking kind of weird. Anyway, so they're trying to get a baby going in Star Labs. And so, yeah, another Bart Allen teaser there. Obviously, this was set up, like, a couple of episodes ago where they said they're going to try for a baby. And obviously, that is leading up to what's going to happen towards the end of the season where you're going to have Barry and Iris' kids actually show up. And so this is like another teaser for that, but this was like a weird teaser for that. Anyway, let's continue with this. So back to Cecile, who whammies Barry, and Barry is sent into her kind of mindscape. And so the person that's taken over her has got rid of Barry, and so it's revealed this golden mask that she sees is in fact Psycho Pirate's mask, and this is revealed by Chester as he looks through Cisco's kind of crisis book of villains and so apparently if you wear the mask it feeds off your mind and the real psycho pirate is behind bars still so it's not him it's the legit like actual mask that is controlling people and controlled the supposed real psycho pirate so apparently team flash fought him like i mean 
they were going to include him in Crisis, but they didn't actually include him in Crisis. So maybe that happened like off screen or something else happened that I don't remember. But anyway, so yeah, you have Psycho Pirate and this whole storyline going on with Cecile. So there is a lot more that is going on than meets the eyes. So we have Cecile who is locked away inside here for two weeks since the Force Storm happened. And so the doors open and Barry and Cecile walk out as she has to face her fears. But yeah, so she's been in here for quite a while and that's kind of like a little bit of a shocking revelation. Okay, so Sue Dearborn returns. I thought she had like a pretty cool part in the episode. At first I was like, okay, so they just wanted to bring her back. Sure, fine, like why not? And you know, in the end she has a pretty cool role. She's going to be in the next episode as well. It makes sense to bring her back in these kind of filler episodes because she can have more time to shine rather than like them and they're going to be focusing on Godspeed and then you're obviously going to be focusing on like main team Flash members as they try and unravel the Godspeed mystery as that all goes on. But so Chester also throughout this episode is doubting himself and you get some reassurance by Iris later in the episode. But if we go back, so Cecile suggests like lots of different things that are leading her towards getting the mask and it's all been planned very meticulously. And in this scene where they go into the place, they break in, there's lasers everywhere and Sue dances her way through the lasers and this is to classical music. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I said I liked Sue in this episode, but this scene was just a bit too over the top for me and I thought it was a bit silly actually because it was like, what's the point? I mean, just like dodge them, you don't have to dance over it. But that's just what I was thinking. I don't know if you guys agree with me, that's a bit of a nitpick, but let's move on from this. So Cecile follows in behind and Baron Cecile in the other part, so we're jump cutting between the two situations. They see that there is an insane version of Cecile, like this alternate version, who has like big kind of drooping makeup all over her eyes. She looks a little bit scary. And so this is where, you know, they first see the portal. They know there is a way out of here, but she is blocking the way and they must defeat her. And so as we have back in like normal times on normal earth on the normal plane of existence basically you have team flash working with sue and also working with the fake cecile which they don't know is the fake cecile at this point but inside the van you have iris and chester and the camera in these scenes are doing a really weird thing like it's just zooming in like a tiny bit like it does like in the office or something and I don't know what that added to the episode, but I thought that was really weird and I thought I would mention that because that's like another nitpick to do with the filmmaking, but I just thought it was bad filmmaking in that instance. Anyway, let's move on from this. So Cecile gets the Psycho Pirate Mask. So she puts it on and her eyes glow up and she turns yellow, like golden yellow. Her mask is all yellow. And yeah, this was really cool. I really liked this scene. I think I really liked everything to do with the Psycho Pirate side of Cecile, like in reality. Not so much inside the Mindscape, and we'll get to that in a minute, but she becomes the host of the mask for eternity. And so she is incredibly powerful, causing Sue to turn a dart gun onto herself and shooting herself. And that proves she is incredibly powerful with the Psycho Pirate mask. And so it turns out Hayden, aka Psycho Pirate, who is locked away, was possessed by the mask this whole time, rather than him controlling the mask in any way. And so the lightning that hit her was from the mask disguised as the Force Storm. So that was an interesting development that was unexpected, but I guess it was set up and, you know, they were thinking about this. So I guess it's kind of smart, although it was made to look very much so like it was just like a normal lightning bolt hitting her and it could have been from Bashir like a couple of episodes ago and this is actually brought up in the episode. And so Cecile knows that they're in this psychiatric hospital because she was a patient there before so this is a big reveal and as a student after her mum's death she had a complete breakdown and was sent there and that's where you get this alternate version of her so you get flashbacks seeing her running around the facility. It's a bit weird because she's the same age but never mind like I guess that is acceptable however 
Barry makes the seal realize that she can get them both home and so his powers return as the seal is able to conquer her fears and conquer her past. Parallel in this you have Chester who's talking to Iris about his insecurities of taking over from Cisco's role. Iris comforts him and by the end of the episode he's like an official team Flash member, like a core member replacing Cisco, but he is himself and they value you know everything he's going to be doing and adding towards the team obviously that's great and i really like that he's being properly integrated because chester is a great character and i really really do like him okay so cecile as psycho cecile as chester calls him goes down to the basement and tries to permanently exist with inside cecile's body i see this is the psycho pirate mask controlling her but she talks to herself, she stands down there and she does the villain thing of like, okay, let's just stare. And, you know, I guess that's fine. But anyway, so I'm not so sure about evil Cecile inside the mindscape. Like, you had a couple of lines saying, oh, so brave. And like, she's acting crazy, but she's not super convincing. It was kind of funny the way that they did it rather than Cecile acting really like scary or anything like yes I get the makeup is scary but the way she was acting like doing all these weird movements and stuff it kind of looked like they were taking a mick out of people with actual mental health issues so it seemed a bit out of place and, and a bit out of touch but that's just my impression I don't know if you guys agree with me I thought it was a bit silly and a bit over the top for them trying to actually tackle something very important okay so that being said normal Cecile was very good very convincing as always and psycho Cecile was taken down as Iris and Chester come up with a plan and so normal Cecile actually at the same time inside the mindscape defeats her overcoming her doubts and at this point Chester stabs the thinker's chair and it kind of electrocutes and smashes to the ground one final nitpick I have is when Cecile takes over inside the mindscape, her eyes light up and the camera does like a 360 degrees turn like three times and it was really poorly done because this is digitally done and they're just rotating the image round and round. Like imagine you got a photo on your phone and you're just spinning around three times or something like that. That's what they were doing and I just thought that was like a bit pointless. Like they could have just like tracked back on the dolly and that was it but oh well that's a few nitpicks obviously I've had like a few nitpicks throughout this video talking about like some of the filmmaking stuff and some of the aspects of Cecile's evil version of herself and a couple of different things here and there but I think one of the best scenes in the episode was towards the end like I mentioned to do with Joe and Cecile talking about mental health because it seemed to be properly legit and they were talking about it in a serious way rather than playing it off as a kind of device to have this evil version of Cecile. So yeah, and Kramer, you get that big reveal to do with her and her army mission going wrong and her potentially betraying the rest of her team. So what do you guys think about all of this? Let me know down in the comments below. Also remember my Superman Lois review that has just finished, the episode just finished right now, is going to be coming out later today, so please be sure to stick around for that. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps if you leave that like to get the video spread around. Also subscribe and turn on the notifications if you're new, and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.